Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here. Sorry I don't speak Portuguese. I could do it in Spanish, but maybe next time I'll try uh, some combination of the three languages. Uh, I truly appreciate the invitation uh, to uh, basically to visit your home. And I even appreciate even more the fact that you showed up for the lecture. Uh, you know, after one travels uh, very far, it's sometimes very disappointing to, uh, to reach a place and uh, not have people uh, listen to the message you want to send. So I have a story of something that happened to me about a month ago where I had to give this lecture in the mountains of Georgia. And uh, I drove to this university in the mountains in the rain. And when I got there, uh, I walked into the auditorium like this and, uh, or bigger actually, and there was only one person there. And you know, when I got to the, uh, to the parking spots and saw only one car, I got concerned, I checked everything, it was the right place, at the right time, one person. And you know, my instinct was to leave, uh, but it was raining, I was tired, and I felt bad about this poor person who also came to listen to me. So I decided, uh, to give the lecture, and uh, I turned on my computer, hooked it up to the monitor, and gave my one-hour lecture. When I finished, I asked him if he had any questions. He said no. <laughs> <laughs> then, as I was packing and getting ready to leave, he said, uh, excuse me, it wouldn't be appropriate for you to leave now. And I said, why? He says, I'm giving the second lecture. <laughs> So you can see how encouraged I am to have you here in the audience. All right. So today we're going to talk about a lot of things. And you know, we're getting into this part of technology that some of it sounds a little bit like magic. So uh, I will be around after. And uh, I mean, you're welcome to uh, ask questions. And uh, uh, I always like to try to answer the questions that you have, but I anticipate some of those and some things that I think you should understand about the new technology, uh, both from the hardware, software uh, point of view. And so let's just get into it. Um, I was uh, honored uh, in Denver last week to give the Mario Verhani lecture. And uh, uh, I'm sure all of you uh, know of him or knew him, and um, great uh, physician from, from Brazil. Uh, and. Uh, the, the title of the lecture is Nuclear Cardiology, We're Almost There. And, and I went through many of the strengths of nuclear cardiology, why we are where we are, and what will continue to be around for a long time. So I'm not going to give you that lecture, uh, but I do want to show you one slide from that lecture. And to, we need to understand, uh, when we compete with other modalities, uh, what is our strength? And we have many of them. I'm just going to point out that whether we compare nuclear cardiology to CT, we compare it to MRI, we compare it to echo, uh, we have superior contrast resolution than any of those. So let me show you an example here from this paper in the European uh, Radiology Journal in 2008, where they're developing techniques, as you know, for uh, measuring perfusion uh, with island contrast agent and multiple detector CT. And you can see the image here where there's a, a region in the wall that is uh, re reduced in, uh, in the uptake of the contrast agent. And this indicates that it's hypoperfuse. In fact, it happens to be infarcted. Uh, but they compared to this very poor nuclear medicine, nuclear cardiology perfusion image. But, and you can see very poor spatial resolution here compared to this nice spatial resolution. But yet, the hypoperfuse area, the infarct, is much easier to see even with this old technology in this old machine compared to the new technology. So what's amazing now, and um, I'll talk about uh, uh, some of these things, is that now we move to new technology. We go several generations both in terms of agents perfusion agents and uh, imaging agents. So this is a CCT machine, and now we're acquiring in two minutes for stress and four minutes for rest. And you can see 
comparing the quality of these two images, uh, how much higher contrast resolution this has, both in delineating the cavity and the uh, stress-induced perfusion defect and the reversibility of the defect. And here, comparing with uh, looking at a fluorinated PET perfusion agent, you can see how well delineated uh, this defect is uh, at stress and how well it normalizes at rest. And in fact, the quality is so good that we begin to see the left atrium and we can see the, uh, the, the right uh, ventricle and so on. So um, our improvements industry continues to invest in, in our field. So briefly, this is a very brief outline we want to talk about, but we want to talk about hardware detector design and software signal processing reconstruction. There's been tremendous improvement in reconstruction techniques, and I want you to understand them, because again, it looks a little bit like magic. Uh, and then we'll talk more about image analysis. So just like me, you know and love the dual detector conventional spec camera. And it's been a great machine, uh, and we used it for many, many years. But the limitation of the machine is that, in general, it was designed uh, for nuclear medicine procedures beyond cardiac, it's for those places that uh, were doing not only heart but other things. Uh, and you can see that what happens is the heart occupies just a small region of the crystal, and you're paying for all this detector, and you're hardly using it. So the idea is, how can we move forward and be a little bit smarter as to how we design this detector? So now there's a number of companies that have designed uh, a new generation of dedicated cardiac ultra-fast acquisition scanners, where instead of having two detectors, you have multiple detectors. So we we'll briefly talked about uh, a three-detector system, a nine-detector system, and a 19-detector system. And the beauty is that they do uh, their look at the field of view where their heart is, and of course it increases the count sensitivity tremendously. And again, the uh, the unexpected uh, surprise is that it also increases energy resolution, spatial resolution, contrast resolution, temporal resolution. It's like you know when. When, not only when I went to school, but when I gave lectures, I kept saying, that's impossible, you can do all that. You've got to give something up. So this is, uh, these are three different uh, uh, designs, uh, and there are three that are commercially available. They're clinically validated. They all have undergone multi trials. They're multiple, meaning there's more than two detectors, and they're solid-state detectors, and they're cardiac-centric we're not even sure spec is the right word, but let's call them spec systems. And this is the, uh, the D-spec approach uh, from Spectrum Dynamics, and you see a, uh, a rectangular detector. Uh, and there's nine of them that fan, they're actually moving, fanning over the field of view of the patient. This is uh, the Cardius 3 from uh, DigiRat, and you can see there's three detectors. This is more like uh, conventional under cameras, but in fact they, are, uh, they use the, the solid state uh, technology to some degree. And then there's a system that I've had the most experience with, even though we've had all, uh, many of these, at, all three of these have been at Emory at some time, and we even have other of these at Emory that we are e evaluating. But the one we use every day clinically is the Discovery Nuclear Medicine uh, 530C detector from General Electric, and this has 19 ZCT detectors. Now it's important to compare apples to apples, so uh, you probably have heard that GE bought the company that makes these uh, solid state detectors, uh, which uh, Spectrum Dynamics used to use, and that they, they have looked and I think found another manufacturer. But before that, they both were both using exactly the same detectors from the same company, except that uh, detector by detector, the GE used 19 versus 9, and the cost of the system is in these detectors. Now these detectors are pixelated, uh, meaning that uh, the, uh, the size of a pixel is roughly 2.5 millimeters, and the spatial resolution you're going to get is roughly between 3 millimeters to 5 millimeters, where uh, I wonder if you know the resolution you have in your system now, conventional state-of-the-art spec systems, 
in the heart is roughly 10 millimeters resolution. So uh, that in itself is, is quite an improvement. But the other interesting thing with this system is that uh, it's easier to think about it as a PET scanner than it is as a SPECT scanner for several reasons. Uh, one of them is that once you start acquiring, nothing moves. So opposed, uh, as opposed to conventional SPECT that rotates around the patient, or the D-SPECT that moves around, or the dg rad that also rotates around the patient, uh, you're simultaneously looking at 19 pinhole projections from different projections. But the interesting thing is also, it's not only PET, it's 3D PET. What do we mean by that? Means that not only do we look at angular sampling in this dimension, from here to here, but we're also looking at angular sampling in the other dimension. So if I count, there's nine here times three, you can see there's actually room for 27, but uh, to make it affordable at this point, uh, uh, it's being released with 19 uh, detectors. So the ability of having this uh, 3D imaging, you will see an example I show you. Uh, for example, in ladies when we're imaging breasts, we can see like in planar imaging above and below the breasts, and there's a lot less breast attenuation with this machine than there is with conventional spec. Before I forget, the, uh, the other uh, benefit of all three of these machines is that they acquire in list mode. So uh, thinking again like PET for this particular machine, uh, if we want to start thinking about measuring flow, uh, and what's limiting us now is not the detectors or the camera, because this camera can do it, it's more the, uh, the tracer. We need a tracer with a high extraction fraction, and we have actually two one Tevoroxin that went out of, uh, is not being commercialized at this point, and the other one is called I-123 uh, Rotenum, which is actually an analog of the fluorinated fluoridas uh, and has extremely high extraction fraction. So very soon, not only in PET, that's already happening, but also in SPEC, you'll be able to uh, measure flow. The other thing I want to make sure I don't forget to tell you is that the spin holes are made out of tungsten. So the, the system is really, and by the way, the same thing with the collimator for, for D-SPEC. The tungsten gives you uh, a much better range for imaging thallium to I-123. So you know with thallium, the problem is the, the lead x-ray picked up by the thallium. Uh, so it's the lead from the collimator that's creating a peak that uh, uh, reduces the contrast of the images. And I-123, you know there's very high energy photons at a, sm uh, at a low abundance, but it can hurt you when you start collimating the lower photons uh, where the high go through. So I'm not throwing a lot of things to you, I just want to absorb some of it and then we can talk some more about it. So this is again the anger camera. Uh, less anger that gave us this device 50 years ago and we all used it for many many years and you know how this works the scintillator absorbs the uh, gamma ray converts it to light it goes through the light path and is seen by all the photomultipliers uh, and you can see this is what one photomultiplier looks like in CCT what happens is the gamma ray comes in goes into the solid state detector and it gets converted into an electrical pulse right within the pixel so there's truly no scintillation. Now I realize in Brazil you call nuclear imaging scintillography, so that's a problem for you because it's no longer scintillography. Uh, but compare the, the size one photomultiplier uh, to one of these detectors. But also look at the energy resolution. So here is imaging simultaneously I-123 and technetium 140 keV and the purple is the anger camera from a, a state-of-the-art spec system. It happens to be the Ventry system. And uh, you can see uh, that uh, this is the region between the two peaks where with the Alcyon technology, which is the, what GE calls this technology for solid state, you can see much better delineation of the two photo peaks, even though they're imaged simultaneously. So we're comparing 10% energy resolution 
to a 6% energy resolution. 